What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. <laughs> oh my god. My blah, blah. Hi. Who am I today? And what grand and glorious adventures are we going to have on this show? Um, it has been two weeks since I've done the show. I never skip a week. I haven't skipped a week in like a year and a half until last week. Hi, Michael. And um, I have been traveling like a fiend. I was in Mexico doing a class, and then I went to Houston for the rewrite of Global Foundation, and then this weekend I was hosting Christopher Hughes for Right Voice for You in Atlanta. And um, today I'm home, I slept in, sort of, till six, and then I went back to bed. Anyway, I've just <laughs> let myself have run of the house today. It's been really great. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Bobby John. And, um, I have so many different things that I would like to just chat with you about and so of course I have to pick one because time because it gets crazy hi Heather and um, and so I did so I called this week's show I always have to look uh, if you had no point of view about a problem would it be a problem <laughs> and this came up over and over and over and over and over again in right voice for you and Christopher just kept inviting us over and over and over well if you had no point of view about that then what would be available if you had no point of view about that what would be available and so it just like I kept getting washed in this awareness of how many points of view I actually still have about a lot of things and mostly about myself and mostly about how I can't and I won't um, I was chatting with a, a friend of mine this morning about, and I had, listen, you guys are so amazing. When I ask you to send in questions, you do. And um, so I have like 12 different people that emailed me with something that's going on for them. So I will get to that. Um, I wanted to quickly tell you that I had a quick conversation this morning with a friend of mine who's got a couple of businesses. And um, when I called him, he was like kind of grunt, grumpy about money, you know. And he told me why. And here's what we do. We, we get grumpy about something and then we have a why we're grumpy about it. That's, that's how you do it. You get grumpy and you have a why you're grumpy. So anyway, so he was like, well, you know, my business and it, this, this time of year is always hard. This time of year, there's always no cash flow. Well, you guys, and I have to, re I have to be reminded of this all the time. Your point of view creates your reality. Reality doesn't create your point of view. So what the more popular thing to do is go, well, this reality right here, you see this reality right here, this sucky thing is creating what I now have to deal with. So what we put ourselves right at the effect of whatever the fuck it is, we have made the problem, put ourselves at the effect of it, let the problem abuse us when the whole thing's made up in the first place. So I'm starting a new class in a week and a half called Becoming a Great Facilitator of Yourself because I got aware that we all have these bits and bites and things that we want to create with our lives. Some of us want to change everything. Some of us want to just make more money. Some of us want to change the world, whatever, right? We all have these things. Some of us want to open a hobby farm. Um, but what are you doing and being with your, what are you being with yourself that's actually empowering you to choose that and have that? Um, there is no magical like, fairy team that just comes down and like dumps stuff in your world there's a willingness to choose and create and ask in your world that's required to be able to receive everything that the universe has for you so the gap becomes well how do you get from what feels like way over here to way over here right so I want to play with some of these things that you guys sent in because these are things a lot of us are dealing with and I think it might be helpful so let's go all right Cynthia wrote in and she said um, well, I know Cynthia really well, so she went, well, we've been down this path before. I can sometimes actualize money and sometimes not. What if I could do it all the time? What in the heck do I have to offer that I'm not offering or being that would bring in constant streams of money? Arr! Right? She, does anybody, can anybody relate to that? Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Right? Which seems like a question because when you write it, it's got a question mark at the end. <laughs> So here's, I want to I want to invite us to play with this question really differently this episode because I'm going to be playing with this really differently in my world. One of the things I'm going to be doing with myself is going, if I had no point of view about this, what would I choose? If I had no point of view about this, what could I be aware of? Because guess what keeps awareness of other possibilities out of your awareness? Judgment. 
So here's the thing about money. When you get frustrated with yourself, you get frustrated that you seem to be doing all the things and nothing is showing up. Um, hi, Kelly. Hi. I school. I, I school. I wish I knew how to say your name. I'm sorry. Hi, Marta. Um, when you get frustrated and you get mad at yourself or mad at the universe or mad at whoever you're mad at, you're judging. How do I know? Uh, I mean, I've done it like 25,000 times. <laughs> I like to judge myself. It's like one of my favorite things to do, except for this weekend. I'm like, well, now it's not as fun as it was before, <laughs> right? So you're judging yourself. So you cannot have awareness of anything else besides the judgment of yourself, which therefore defeats what it is you think you're trying to create, which is more money. So you can't have awareness of other possibilities with money because you're busy over here fucking killing yourself with judgment, right? Hi, and yes, what the fuck, exactly. So Cynthia's busy judging herself. She's the only one. So, so here's, the, here's the thing about all this stuff that we do in our own brains is you have to get creative and find ways around yourself because you are very potent and very powerful and very creative. And so when you want to judge yourself, you just will because you're also stubborn and then you like doing what you're doing until you're done doing it. So sometimes you got to go around your own stupidity and your own stubbornness and you got to ask yourself a different question that sort of mind fucks you. Here's, here it is. Here's the one I'm going to be playing with. All right, if I had no point of view about no money, what would that be like? If I had no point of view that I don't have consistent revenue streams, what would that be like? If I had no point of view about any of this, what would I be aware of and what could I choose? I don't know about you, but the moment I ask myself that question, like all the charge goes out of it. All of the charge goes out of it, number one. Number two, I get aware of how many points of view I actually have about it. Well, I should be having consistent revenue streams. I'm not having consistent revenue streams. There's something wrong with me that I have revenues, don't have revenue streams. I, I mean, can you guys, can you guys hear all the, like, the secret, hidden, covert, underlying points of view that are actually creating the frustration? I should have this figured out. I don't have this figured out. What's wrong with me that I don't have this figured out? I must be doing something wrong. I must be missing something. All of that's going on underneath the frustration. You can't actualize a flow of money from there. It, read the How to Become Money workbook. That is not the place from which money gets created. Hi, Anat. Hi, Diana. Hi, Lori. So you got to outcreate yourself somehow. So it's like, okay, well, what if I could have... There, here's another one that I'm going to be fucking with myself around. You guys, I'm going to do a whole class on what I'm about to talk about because it is like changing my life. But... What if I could have gratitude for this amount of money? What if I could have gratitude for these amount of revenue streams? What if I could have gratitude? Like, actually, what if you got the elements of intimacy involved? Like, what if you could have gratitude for no revenue streams? What if you could have gratitude for exactly what it is, exactly the way that it is? What if you could honor that amount of money? What if you could be vulnerable with money? What if you could be... Um, so the elements of intimacy are gratitude and honoring and allowance and... Um, vulnerability and trust. What if you could trust you? What if you could trust money? What if you could um, I'll be an allowance of you and in allowance of money? Instantly those questions start to create a different space. And what we tr keep trying to do is we keep trying to create from this contracted, judged, small, raisin shriveled, space and then we get mad that nothing shows up we're like so we're being this crappy version of ourselves that isn't even ourselves we're not actually just being okay well this is really cool i wonder what else is possible we're being oh fuck i hate myself and blah 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 and expecting projecting and expecting that something great's going to come out of the the shit pile well it's a different kind of shit pile like flowers don't grow in that shit pile right they grow in the in the pile of like wow okay cool um, this is really amazing, actually. I'm so grateful for what I have been able to create, and what could I actually create now? We don't try to create. We don't even go to that place where we try to create from there. We just try to fucking use a tool to get out of what's wrong with us. Well, the thing is, nothing's wrong with you. You're just a creator. And so sometimes you create crap because it's fun. So if I had no point of view about this, what could I be aware of and what could I choose? Hi, Roxana. Okay, so there's that scenario. So let's go on to Diana's question. So Diana is in the middle of a situation and doesn't know how to change it. Um, her relationship is shit, and she has no clue what to choose. 
So when you have no clue what to choose, it's because you're looking for a reference point or the right choice. There is no right choice. There is only choice. So if I were truly being me here, what would I choose? And if I could fire all of my choices right now, who would I, who and what would I bring back? That's how I play with that. And then there is this debt situation, she says. I have to pay back some money, a big amount. And one, I have no money. And two, I have no clients. And three, all my life when I needed a big amount, I took it from someone and then to pay it back, I had to take it from someone else and so on until today. So tomorrow is the day that I have to pay that money back and I don't have it. Well, I'm thinking, what's the fastest way to disappear? So um, this, just some fun information for you guys about y'all, about me, is that we're humanoid. And what that means is we're not human. And what that means is that there's things that are really different about us. And one of the things humanoids do is they put everything off to the last minute to prove how powerful they are. So she's gotta pay all this money back tomorrow is Diana gonna sink or is she gonna find a way to pay it back? My guess is she's gonna find a way to pay it back. She's gonna create. Now, she's probably gonna judge herself while she's doing that because that's the fun thing to do is judge yourself instead of celebrate the fact that she can create. But you do have choices when you get yourself into these situations. A lot of us do this. We get ourselves into car problems and we get ourselves into money problems and debt problems and relationship problems. I did problems like a fucking champion. I'm like, I should have a crown. Um, and then we outcreate them, weirdly. We move, or we leave in the middle of the night, or we find a way to handle it, or we create the money. All of us do. And that's one of the things I ask everybody I ever coach with or facilitate, have a session with is like, Truth, do you ever, ever let yourself fall? Ever. And I remember the first time that I asked myself that question, I had never, I, re, I didn't, I had never looked at it. I'd felt like I'd let myself fall over and over and over. I remember there was one time I was kicked out of my mom's house. I, the guy that I was dating thought I was flaky and kicked me out of his house. And so I was literally sleeping in my car. And I think I'd just gotten fired. Like it was kind of all the things, you know, I didn't have a roof. I didn't have any money. I didn't have a job and I was fired. And, um, so when this person asked me this question, had I ever let myself fall, I thought I, my mind immediately went to that point. And I was like, you know what? Even at that point, I still had a car. I still had a place to sleep. I never truly let myself fall. And that's important to look at as you are out creating your knack for creating problems and you're beginning to choose the creation of your life is beginning to look for the places where you are actually more powerful than you've ever acknowledged. Because as you start to acknowledge that power, you will have access to it. When you are not acknowledging that you're powerful, when you're not acknowledging that you have the creative ability, you don't have any access to it. You have it, you are it, but you don't have access to it because you're not willing to know it or be it or perceive it or receive it. And so the beginning of perceiving it and being that powerful and being what you actually are is looking back and going, okay, what? It's really being the question of what is right about me that I haven't gotten. Like looking back going, have I ever let myself fall? Do I ever not create? Do the children ever go not hungry? Even if, you know, do I ever let this not get handled? No. Okay, fine. So I may not like the way that I'm doing this right now. I may want to do this differently in the future, but for now I'm creating in the way that I can, in the way that I know that I can. What else is possible? All right, cool. And I mean, play with our tools. Like if I had no point of view about any of this, what would I choose? I mean, that's actually an epic tool for this. If you had no point of view about how you create the money to pay back the money, what would you choose? We get ourselves trapped into these perfect traps with all our points of view. Well, I can't do it this way and I shouldn't do it this way and I can't do it this way and I won't do it this way and I can't be that and I can't be that and I can't do that and I won't do that. Great, now you're in a perfect trap. You're welcome. You're that powerful that you can create for yourself the perfect trap where you have no choice, absolutely. Jesus, H Christ in a basket. Like what else is truly possible? What other choices are truly available that you have never considered? Hi Maruna, thank you so much. And hi Julie. So next question, Gabrielle. And thank you guys for sending these in. Man, what a gift. Um, she goes, I would love to have much more phenomenal sex, sex for me and my body. Okay, cool. So if you had no point of view about how much sex you got or if it was phenomenal or not, 
this is where you use the tool. If I had no point of view about this, what could I choose? If I had no judgment about what phenomenal sex was or what phenomenal sex wasn't, what questions could I ask? If I had no point of view about any of this, what would actually be available? So we even trap ourselves with things like phenomenal, and I'm not saying that that's what she's doing, but we do this. I want phenomenal sex. Now what does that mean you get to do? That means you get to judge every single person who comes into your world based on what you've decided phenomenal sex looks like, feels like, and is like. You get to judge them and you and then go into the situation having already decided that it will be phenomenal based on what you've judged and then you get to separate, judge, and reject you. Well, how does it get better than that shit show? <laughs> right? Like, seriously. Hello? Right? So it's asking the questions of, hey, will it be fun? Yes or no? Will it be easy? Yes or no? Will I be grateful in the morning? Yes or no? Fucking go out and play with that. Go out into a crowded mall and don't tell anybody what you're doing and look at every single person. Will it, would it be fun? Yes or no? Would it be easy? Yes or no? Will I be great for after? Yes or no? And start getting a different awareness of what is actually true that goes beyond your judgments and your projections and your expectations of what you've decided is true. Okay, if I had no point of view about this, what could I choose? How easy is it to create sex in somebody's life? I, don't even get me started on that. I, that's a whole other show. Girl, okay? Um, Miss Aurelia, and she and I know Miss Aurelia really well too, and she goes, um, you know the thing I'm trying to change the most are my relationship with my mother and my money issues. Aurelia's got money issues. I've been uncovering so much stuff recently that it's mind-blowing. I see that more than half the things I feel are not mine, but hers. True story. Um, and I also see how I react to others in the same ugly manner my mom does to me. What would it take for all that to change with total ease? Thank you. Miss Aurelia, this is actually, I, I keep bothering uh, Aurelia to read chapter two from the 10 Keys to Total Freedom. Guess what it's about? interesting point of view. I have this point of view. And that's actually what we're talking about, but we're talking about it in a different way today. If I had no point of view about my mom, what choices would I have available? No point of view. If you had no point of view about the way she is in the world, if you had no point of view about the way she talks to you, if you had no point of view about um, her health, if you had no point of view about the way she lives, if you had no point of view, what would actually be available? If you had no point of view about how much money you had or how much money you didn't have, what would you really like to choose with money? The thing I'm getting with this question is like for the first time it puts into perspective, at least for me, I'm getting a lot out of this show, um, <laughs> that I actually always have choice. And if I take point of view out of it with that question, I all of a sudden see all the choices I have. I'm like, well shit, if I had no point of view about my mother, I could stay around her or not stay around her. Or I could go to the grocery store or I could live somewhere else. Or like if I truly had no point of view about my mother, I could choose whatever the fuck I wanted. I mean, if she's a mean cunt, I can move out, you know? If I had no point of view, but if I have the point of view that I have to be a good daughter and I said I would and I can't because money and, I mean, list, list them up. Line, it's like shots, right? Line up the points of view and then shoot them, then you shoot them and then you're drunk on unconsciousness and lies. How's it get better than that? I get it. I, I like to be drunk on unconsciousness and lies here and there too and my big demand of myself is that I just become more aware of where I am functioning from points of view so that I can let the fuckers go. Your point of view creates your reality, not the other way around. So whatever points of view you have going on about your mom are creating the reality with your mom. Whatever points of view you've got going on about money are creating what you have going on around money. So you can go in and try to dig out all the weeds and da da da, or you can just ask yourself a different fucking question, which is what I love about this question. If I had no point of view about how much money I have, what would I choose? Would I have less money or would I have more money? Okay, I'd have more money. Okay, what could I create to have more money right now? Okay, Miss Liliana. She said, in relation to money, I make processes, but it still doesn't show up. I make processes, but so and does anybody else do this? You run clearing loops about money and then you get frustrated about why it's not showing up. So access consciousness tools are such a fucking gift because you can create these clearing loops that just shave off the unconsciousness around money. But guess what the clearing loops are shaving off? Points of view. They're just shaving off the points of view. 
They're not activating the money fairies to drop piles of money in your lap in the middle of the night. <laughs> Those damn money fairies, they've been lazy lately, right? They are shaving off points of view to, to make space for you. You're the, you, my loves, my, my friends are the infinite being. You are the infinite being with infinite choice that keeps functioning like a finite pile of shit, okay? I do it. I get it. It's okay. You're not wrong. We just keep functioning like we can't. That's the part that's not true. So for the clearings, they just shave off, shave off, shave off, shave off all the things that we've bought. We keep buying, we're shit. We keep buying, we can't. We keep buying, we keep buying all these lies about us. None of it's true. So we run clearing loops because that starts to like clear out all the shit that we bought. Now guess what that does? That makes space. It actually gives you access to the space for you. The space for you. You are, <laughs> thank you so much, Gabrielle. You are the source. You're the source. So as the source, if you're all muddied up with all these points of view, guess what the source creates? We create from all the points of view. But if as the source, you're creating from energy and space and consciousness, baby, you got choice. You got infinite choice. So, so you do all these clearing loops, do them, create the space. Now, guess what you have to do? Choose. You have to choose. You cannot create without choice. Boom, that's it. That's the shortcut, choice. Now, what I love about this question is if I had no point of view about how much money I have or don't have, what would I choose? It gives you an awareness of what you would choose. Would you choose to live under a bridge or would you choose to live in a really beautiful house or somewhere in the middle? Would you choose to just tolerate stuff or would you choose to start researching and looking at what would really make your life sing? All of those are choices. None of them are wrong. Oneness includes everything. It includes judgment. It includes ridiculousness. It includes unconsciousness. Oneness includes everything. It includes all of you exactly as you are. So all of you is just a creation. It's you're an amalgamation of different choices and points of view and things like you're just a creation. You're a Play-Doh person, right? You're blue and orange and pink and blah, 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 you know, whatever, you know, like just blobs of Play-Doh everywhere. So now you are getting the awareness. Um, Austria, okay, Austria is starting to ping. That sounds exciting. Now you're starting to get the awareness of what you've created. That, somebody asked me that. They're like, well, am I creating more crap or am I just getting awareness of all the crap that I've created? And I'm like, well, what do you know? Right? We're uncovering things so we have more awareness of what we have created. And you're looking around your life going, well, fuck, this is a lot of crap. <laughs> right? And not only that, but like what you'd actually like to have as your life is changing too. And so it looks even crappier because now you'd really like to have more. <laughs> right? So the, it can be uncomfortable to look at. I get it. I've had to look at a lot of this myself and change a lot of it. So, but if you had no point of view about what you've already created, what would you like to create now? Instant allowance. Okay. Miss Linda. Oh, this is a big long one. I love Linda. Linda, I'm going to move on to the next one. Miss iSchool. iSchool. I would hope I'm saying your name right. Oh, you beautiful thing. She's been listening to me all day. <laughs> And I think she's live here too. She goes, um, my all time problem is having just enough money. Okay. And here's where I want to say that I did use the word problem in the title of the show, but you never actually have a problem. All you have is creation. And when you see something as a problem, that's the first faulty premise that you start to try to create from, but it's faulty because if you've already decided something is a problem, you have to try to fix it, but fixing it, trying to fix something that isn't a problem, it just doesn't work. What does work is making a totally different choice. And what I'm inviting you to um, with this conversation is, okay, good. Um, and what I'm inviting you to is like, is the question that will allow you to actually perceive what you've created as creation. So if I had no point of view about this, what would I be aware of is a great question. So my all time problem is having just enough money. So just enough money. Is anybody else dealing with that? Just enough. I have just enough. And then I let go of it. And then I have just enough again. Um, and I wish to outcreate myself and create more money that my life demands. 
And I will say right now for all of you guys, if you have not read the How to Become Money Workbook every two weeks, you will continue to have what you think are money problems. Go fucking dive into that workbook. And at some point here, I will do another round of the How to Become Money Workbook um, every two weeks. But you can do that on your own. You don't have to wait for somebody to do a class. You just fucking open it, grab a glass of wine, and read it out loud to yourself for like two hours. And then another two hours the next day. And then do that every two weeks. That will change everything for you. Yes, exactly. Um, she goes, I joined your mini Zooms and I noticed all the energies that I've been refusing. Like rich chicks that constantly get plastic surgery. I just considered plastic surgery for the first time the other day. I was like, anyway, I think that's funny. Um, I just became friends with one and she is sweet. I've been so judgmental and now she'll be my client for a therapy healing and an access bars class. I've just been, re I've been refusing to be out there on the media. Um, I just set my YouTube channel and I will start recording tomorrow. Fuck yeah. So choices are occurring. You are making choices. Okay, I had judgment of this. Never mind. Now I have a new client. Okay, I had judgment of this. Never mind. Now I'm on YouTube. The only thing preventing her life from getting greater was her judgment. The only thing from getting, preventing your life from getting greater is your judgment. That's it. Um, she goes, things are changing in my receiving and allowing department, just not in the bank yet. I go into frustration of it not showing up soon enough. I enjoy the process of awareness. I want the quantum leap. Okay, here's the quantum leap, as Ghoul and anybody else who's willing. If I had no point of view about how quickly money did or didn't show up, what could I choose? And if I wanted to show up today, what are a hundred different ways that I could go out and create money right now? Because usually when somebody's getting frustrated about money showing up not quickly enough, there's projections and expectations that money is supposed to show up from the places where you've decided it should show up. Not that it just can show up from anywhere and that you can be or do whatever it takes to have money show up now. If you sit down and you make a list of 100 different things that you can do right now to create money, first of all, it's going to seem impossible until you sit down and do it. Second of all, one of the things you're probably going to realize is like you've been really dumb and you've eliminated a lot of possibilities from creating money out of your world because of all your reasons and justifications. Um, and whatever else you discover. Um, it, it changed the energy for me immediately when I was still doing money problem. But also like if you didn't have a point of view about when it showed up, then what could you choose? If you have no point of view, every choice is available to you. If you function from the point of view that it has to show up in the way that it has to show up in the timing that you have to show up, then you're limited to that. You can't see any other possibility for any other thing. My friend today with his two businesses, um, he had decided so many different things about his one business that wasn't doing well. He decided that it, it it was a local business, it was four generations old, it only did this one thing that there was no market for anymore, that he had to keep it open, that he didn't want to keep it open. He had like 18 points of view holding all of that in place and guess what that was creating? And this is what we laughed about this morning. I was like, I was like, well that's great, you've got all these points of view and guess what that's creating? No money. How's that working for you? I mean, if you've got a point of view, is your point of view more valuable to you? Or is what you'd really like to have and create more valuable to you? And not because it's right or wrong, but just because, does it work it? <laughs> is it working? And I said, I said, your points of view sound really, they sound honoring and good according to this reality, keeping that business and the family, but is it working? Is it creating for you what you'd like it to create? I mean, so you can hold on to the points of view that the business, the, the longevity, or it's been in the family for four years, you could hold on to that forever. That will be the rock that drowns you, but at least you will have died a noble death. Or you could let go of your points of view. Drop the rock. I can't swim, I'm drowning. There's a story of a guy who's like in the, in the river and he's like holding on to this massive thing, this massive rock that's drowning him. And he's hollering out to the people above on the, on the shore above going, I can't, I can't swim, I'm drowning, I can't swim. Oh, this is, I can't do this, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And somebody yells down to him from the bridge, drop the rock. He's so committed 
to holding on to the rock to the point of view that he cannot see or perceive or be or know what would actually be possible for him if he dropped it. How easy it would be to swim to the shore. How easy it could be to like create a totally different reality. That's what happens when you hold on to these points of view. Any point of view. It doesn't matter what it is. You could take any point of view. Doesn't matter what the point of view is. If you hold on to it, you are all of a sudden limited to what that point of view can create for you. And most of the time they drown you. So if I had no point of view, so if he had no point of view about the business, what could he create? If he had no point of view about any of that stuff, what would actually be possible? What would be available? All right, well, I couldn't get through all the questions because you guys are so good and you sent in so many and so thank you so much. <laughs> but I hope that contributed to you and I'd be really grateful if you'd share it. And um, I'm gonna invite you to a class called Becoming a Great Facilitator of Yourself. It starts in a couple weeks and there will be links everywhere. I'll be all up in your face about it. <laughs> Uh, but if you are really desiring a different reality with you so that you can create the life that you want, what would this class create for you? I adore you. Share me.